Hey there, good morning. So good to see everybody. Second day of Hanukkah, uh, almost one week out, uh, a little bit less than, than Christmas here. 2022, finishing the year super strong. So today, I wanna kinda go back to basics. So let's talk about your breath and breathing and the muscles of respiration and how important the mobility through the rib cage, through the thoracic spine is to performance. So when it comes right down to it, you need to provide working uh, oxygen to all of the working muscles. And the more effectively and efficiently you can do that could be the game changer for you in 2023. So the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and let's lay on our back and we're gonna work nasal breathing. If you're starting to really dig in on anything breath work, um, and you will see more and more of this from me in 2023, you will recognize that there are two or three different ways of breathing. There, there's probably way more than that. But I preach a lot about um, decompression breathing, and today we're gonna go through a normal breath wave and how that relates um, and is different from decompression breathing as we use in foundation training. And then we're gonna open up the hips and really mobilize the three key areas of mobility, the ankles, the hips, and the thoracic spine. Okay, so let's start out. Let's go right, let's, all I want you to do is lay on your back, knees up, right hand on your belly, left hand on your chest. You can close your eyes if you want, but the most important thing here is we're gonna inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. I have to talk, so I won't quite be there with you on that. But as you inhale, I want you to feel your right hand elevate. And we're just starting right there. Right hand elevates, so your belly elevates as you inhale through your nose. We're gonna do five of them, here we go. Nice big breaths. You should feel your right hand rising and falling. And one more. Good. All right, the next part of the breath wave, a normal breath wave, is how we can expand the rib cage. So let's put both hands on the rib cage, the bottom part of the rib cage specifically. So down at the bottom ribs, put your hands on your rib cage, and as you inhale, I want your belly to rise, and then I want your rib cage to expand. So big inhale, all nasal breathing, five breaths in through the nose. You should feel your rib cage coming out into the hands. You're filling the bottom part of the lungs. Two more big breaths. Those are deep breaths, belly breathing into the bottom part of the ribs, and then we wanna work through the wave. So we wanna elevate the right hand through the belly, expand the rib cage laterally. The, the, the ground is in the way right now that we can't really spread the back part of the ribs, but we will talk about that next. The third part of the wave will be to elevate the rest of the ribs, or the rest of the lungs at the top of the rib cage. So let's go right hand on the belly, left hand on the top of the chest. We got five nasal breaths. Inhale. And then your very last thing you should feel is the top part of your chest. If you feel that first, when you inhale, you're very shallow in your breath, and I want you to focus on breathing all the way down into the belly. Okay, here we go, our five breaths. Belly. 
Belly first, inhale. Ribs second. Top of the ribs last. And then exhale, the exact opposite. Inhale. Inhale. Exhale. All nasal breathing. Last big breath. Inhale. Exhale. And good. All right, from right there, you start to recognize the expansion of the rib cage can start to create space between the ribs and the hips. And that's going to be a really important cue. Two hands into the chest. Grab those knees. Shorten those hip flexors. We're going to grab the left leg only. Extend out through the right. Grab the right. Extend through the left. We're looking for length through the hips. Good and good. All right, right into that uh, dead bug position, which is just going to tabletop the front of the, uh, the lower leg. Pull the toes towards the shins. That's a really important activation there. So no lazy feet, no pointing the toes. Pull the toes towards the shins. Knees are coming straight out from your hip joints, and they're, if anything, a little bit internally rotated towards the midline of the body. Pull the pubic bone to belly button. Let's flatten the back, a little bit of activation. You should feel a hardness in your belly. You should feel strong in your stomach. From right there, we're gonna go heel taps. When you do your heel taps, do not lose contact with the ground, with your low back. You should not be able to put your hand under your low back. This is a position that I work almost every day with each one of my professional athletes. If you are one of my professional athletes, you should be doing heel taps daily. It'll take the pressure off the anterior portion of the hip and allow you to be long through the portion of the hip, which is gonna give you more glute activation and utilization and strength. Power, speed, all of the above, everything we want, all the good things. Good heel taps. And the foundation of those, a successful heel tap is activation and holding of neutral pelvis. Okay, awesome. All right, from right there, let's go right into a half kneeling position. 90, 90, 90 degrees on your lead knee, 90 degrees on your back knee. Whoa, a little, little bit lightheaded. <laughs> okay, right knee down, right hand up. And we're gonna go, wow. You're gonna go, <laughs> Nice and long through your ribs and your hips. Right arm up, left knee drive, way over the toe. And just come right back. So you're looking for length through the rib cage and through the hip. Two, good, nice and high with that arm. Three, good, four, one more, and five. And good, let's hit the other side. When you breathe full breaths, you really fill not only your working muscles, but also your brain with oxygen. So you're gonna think better and you're gonna make better decisions as well as perform better when you breathe better, okay? So we're not talking about breathing right now, we're just, <laughs> I breathe normally. Okay, right knee forward, 90-90. Left arm up, nice and high, long through here, long through the ribs and the hips. Right knee driving over the toe, left hip getting a nice big stretch. Good. There's no movement, just elevate. Just reach through the fingertips. Good. And good. All right. Back to that 90-90 position, but this time let's take that left leg out to 10.30. So let's say that's midnight, this is nine o'clock, you need to be somewhere in the middle. From there, we're gonna take both hands and reach away from this knee. So the knee drive is there, and two hands reaching away. 
and then just come right back. So there's definitely a, a swivel here of the upper body. Knee stays directly over the toe. Reach both hands away and come right back. Three. Hands are high at just above shoulder height. Four. Nice and high. And five. And you start to bring those lats in and how the lat, the big lat muscle and everything through the rib cage starts to interact with the hips and the adductors. Okay, over to 230. Nice big breath to pull the ribs off the hips. Right knee going over the right toe. Hands go away. Just above shoulder height. Come right back to the middle. Two. Good. You can feel how when you reach, how it adds intensity to the inner thigh. Three. Four. And one more. And five. Good. Let's take it right into the lateral half kneeling position. Two hands on the ground. And we're going to toggle back and forth between the hips. So driving the hips back, hands are forward, and we're just toggling in and out of that hip position. This foot should be flat onto the ground. Two, three, head tall, four. You know, I've been watching a lot of, I watch a lot of YouTube, five, switch to the other side. And I've been seeing a lot of people using bands to do big shoulder rotations and movements. Be careful with that stuff. When you start using um, bands and stretch cords and, and webbing, you can get beyond uh, the ranges of motion that are needed. So remember that mobility is about neurological control. Can you get in and out of the position naturally and using your nervous system and your muscular system? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Do you need to take your webbing and be able to wrap your shoulders all the way around in order to be a good swimmer? No, and you should be very careful with that. Okay, should you be able to get up over your head and to the back a little bit? Yeah, 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 definitely. But extreme ranges of motion, I guess is my point, can really take you down a rabbit hole that may not get you where you want to go. Three. Good, just push those hips back. Four. You know, the goal of mobility is to restore a natural range of motion, not excessive and extreme ranges of motion, especially for performance athletes. You need to have a certain level of healthy tightness in order to perform and allow your nervous system to have that quickness and responsiveness that you really, really want. Okay, back to that lateral half kneeling position. We're just gonna do some big arm reaches from that position. So adductors are getting nice and long, hands on the ground, heads in a nice strong position. Left leg is out, left arm up, come back. Gentle with this one, right arm up. Left arm up. Right arm up, three, good, we'll go five each side, four, and five, and good, all right. We might do some extreme performances, like there's a lot of people who do ultra running, there's a lot of people that have big trips planned. There's a lot of people that have two or three grandkids instead of just one <laughs> to be able to play for a long period of time. But the bottom line is we want to play hard and we want to put ourselves in a position to be able to play hard. This training is about that, not about getting better and better and more and more and more here, right? We want to stay healthy. We want to restore optimal and healthy ranges of motion. All right, from right here, we're just taking that right leg is out. This foot is nice and flat on the ground. We go right arm up. That should go with ease. And then we're gonna go left arm up. And it should feel very similar to the other side. Two. And 
two, three, and three, four, and four, one more, five, and five. Couple more rock backs, and good. All right, let's bring it up into a standing position. From right there, we're gonna go right into what we call the woodpecker's position, or the split stance. Two points of contact on your back foot. So that means your toe, big ball of your big toe, ball of your little toe on the ground, and the lead foot, three points of contact. So we've got the heel, the ball of the big toe, and the ball of the little toe. From right there, we wanna be straight up. So you don't wanna be back here, and you don't want your hips back. You wanna be straight up on that lead leg. From right there, we're just gonna float the hands to the height of the heart, softness in the elbows. As we push the hips back, we keep the hands high and we come right back. So a lot of questions around high hamstring and hip issues start with your ability to have a good, healthy hip hinge. So we've got a pretty neutral pelvis from laying and doing our dead bug heel, heel taps. From right there, we wanna have this big, beautiful posture, straight on your lead leg. Float your hands to the height of the heart. The first move here is to push the hips back, keep the hands high, soften your lead knee, find high hamstring, come right back. We got five of those. Push hips back, drop your chest, keep your hands high. Two, you should be feeling high hamstring. Three, four, one more, and five, and good. Same thing other side. So now the right leg is gonna be in front, three points of contact on that lead foot, two points of contact on the back foot. Pull the ribs off the hips. From right there, float the hands to the height of the heart. Elbows are soft and a little bit lower than your hands. From right there, we push the hips back. Hands stay high. Lead knee stays soft. Do not lock out your knee. Two, we're having a little bit of tug of war between the sacrum and the fingertips. Three. Hands high. Four. Pull those ribs away from the hips. And five. Okay, from right there, we're gonna work hip rotation. Let's go back to the first side. So we're gonna go left leg in front of right, right leg back. Now, decompression breathing, not belly breathing. When you belly breathe, the first thing that moves when you inhale through your nose is your stomach. Now, we're gonna take thumbs on the bottom rib, pinkies on the hip bones. This is from Dr. Eric Goodman, foundation training. There's a lot of foundation training, 40, 40 sessions on my EC Fit On Demand app. So I'm gonna lead you through lots of foundation training should you wanna go further with that. Thumbs on the bottom rib, pinkies on the hip bones, elbows floating wide to the side because we wanna expand the rib cage 360 degrees. As you inhale, you're gonna draw your belly into your spine. As you exhale, you're gonna maintain the tightness and the, and the pressure of the belly button into the spine. And you're knitting the stomach muscles together. So we're gonna nasal breathe here, staying in that nice tall position, thumbs on your bottom rib, pinkies on your hip bones. That's your measuring stick to make sure your ribs stay high. This is our chance, only nasal breathing for you, to breathe into your back. Spread your shoulder blades. Good. So the first breath elevates, expands the rib cage, and I want to expand the rib cage 360 degrees from this split stance position. Okay, soft right knee, right knees in front, measuring sticks nice and strong. Float your elbows out to the side, make sure you're not stuck back here. 
Widen out your back. Big breath. Expand the rib cage 360 degrees. Should feel very skinny here. I just create as much space as you can and relax. All right, hip rotation from right here. Let's stay with the front front leg in front or right leg and right leg in front. We're gonna just go ahead and take a big breath and we're gonna lean forward a little bit and hinge at the hip just a little bit, like you're looking over a cliff. From right there, your left hip is in the back. Left hip is going to rotate towards mid-thigh on the right and come right back. We're working as a complete box through your upper back. So when my hip stops, my shoulders don't keep going. If the hip stops, the shoulder stops. One, two, you've got a nice crease at the hips. Three, create some space with your breath. Four. And five. Good. Same thing, other side. And these are things that you can do all throughout the day. Hip mobility, conscious mobility, conscious movement. Always want to pull ribs off the hips with your breath. Decompression breath. Nice big breath. Look over the cliff. Hit your hip, hinge at the hip. Push your hips back. This is going to be right hip into left thigh. Right shoulder and right hip are functioning as one unit here. Two. And that just makes sure that your spine isn't twisting. Three, four, one more, and five, and good. All right, let's take it right back down to half kneeling. And from right here, we're gonna pick up the intensity a little bit. Let's do measuring sticks, 90-90 half kneeling position. Thumbs on your bottom rib, pinkies on your hip bones. We're just gonna drive into that. Two, inhale. Three, four, five. We got 10 reps. Keep the ribs nice and high. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Good. Change sides. 90 90. Tuck that back toe under if you can. Big inhale. Pull the ribs off the hips. One, two. Keep the ribs high. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, two more, nine, and 10. And then we're gonna keep those knees in the same position, but we're gonna reach across. Last time we reached away, this time we're reaching across. So we're gonna get into that same knee drive, hip drive, and rotate across. Keep your eyes on me. One, two, three, four. Keep your ribs high. Five, six, seven, eight. Pull those shoulders around, nine and 10, and good. If you keep your eyes straight, it's always gonna keep you safe from over-rotating. So if the head stays tall, we're just doing that little kind of reverse archer move, pulling the, pulling the bow back, that'll get you right there, really healthy turn. And one, two, we got 10, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Boom. All right, you guys. Happy Monday, December 19th. Hope you have an amazing week. Bring a lot of joy into the world. There's a lot of sadness as well. So be a, be a change agent. Be a happy moment for people. I hope you have a good day. I hope it was a happy moment for you this morning. I know it was for me. Peace out.